The tomb was ready for him. He was buried in the tomb. And on the top of it, they talked about the great King Pakal. He was the greatest of the pink kings of Palenque. And they really liked him, and he was pretty important. And they, uh, his, death, his death is about somewhere between this date and this date, between 912 and 913. He died in 912 something, 912, 11. Anyway, a few years in the future, 137 years in the future, was another date that's a nice round number, 10 0 0 0 0 like 13 0 0 which was coming up. It's an important date because it's a nice round number. And just like the year 2000, right? On 2000, we all had a pretty fancy New Year's ceremony because it was all zeros, right? We like that. They did too. And they talked about uh, 137 years in the future, these events will happen. And they weren't terribly important events. But then they skipped ahead to 20 Bach tunes in the, you know, when the year is, skips from 10, 0, 0, 0, 0, to 11, to 12, to 13. 13 is the one that we're almost about to it. 14, 15, 16, 17, up to 20. And when it gets to 20, it becomes a six digit number. Instead of 13, 0, 0, 0, 0, it's now 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, it's like beginning of the year 10,000. And to them, this was a really important date. And what they said was it's the end of the pick tune, which is the, 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 the 20 Bach tune period. Um, what else is going to happen? Oh, they skipped ahead. They, here it is again. And if you go to the year 10008, here we go. This is an actual, um, an interesting, it's just almost the year 1000, right? It's only eight days after. On that date, it will be the anniversary of the crowning of the king, Pakal, the guy that's buried in this, this big pyramid. The coronation of this king is going to be celebrated in the year 4,772 A.D. This is seven Bach tunes after 13.0000. So they assume, they're, what they're saying here, what they're telling us is that two things. One is that time will go on after 13.0000. It won't restart because the clock goes from 13 to 14, not 13 back to zero. Also, that life is not going to change very much because what they're going to be celebrating is the anniversary of this king's coronation. I mean, they're saying that, okay, we're going to be celebrating Queen Victoria's Jubilee here in the year 5020. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's telling us that the Maya in Palenque anyway did not believe that the world would end in 2012. Does that make sense? Also that the calendar wouldn't end either. And then they went back in time. They connected his, his coronation to an event a million and a half years ago, or a million and a quarter. A million years in the past, they were connecting his coronation with the coronation of a god. And one of the interesting things about Maya things is they have these long, very precise numbers. This is not just a million two hundred forty-six thousand eight hundred twenty-six years. It's a million two hundred forty-six thousand eight hundred twenty-six years and sixty-eight days. Yeah. It's exact, and they could do that because they had a number system with zero. One of the very few ancient peoples that could talk about large numbers very precisely were the Maya. Another group that could do this was the Sumerians. And both the Maya and the Sumerians, because they could, used these large, very precise numbers. The other people, the Romans, the Greeks, the Jews, the Egyptians, they couldn't handle big numbers. Especially the, the, the Romans, the Greeks, and the Jews, because they used letters for numbers and they had only so many letters. If you count in Greek, alpha is one, beta is two, gamma is three, and so forth, right? You run out of after after alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, you get to like lambda, which is 10, mu, which is 11, nu, which is 12, and so or pardon me, 10, 20, 30. Sorry, 10, 20, 30, then 40, and then you get to 100, and you go 100, 200, 300, and you're out of letters. You can't count to a thousand very easily in Greek. They have a word for 10,000, myriad. Myriad means not only 10,000, but it means infinity. <laughs> has a bigger number than we can count. And this is why in the Bible, the, the ages of Methuselah and Adam and Noah, right? They all lived to be in their 900s. Because after the number 1,000, they didn't know how to write it. They didn't say that Methuselah lived to be 10,320 years old. In Sumeria, they did, by the way. Sumeria, they had the ability to write numbers. And their kings lived 240,000 years, 365,000 years. But these numbers were reduced to be under 1,000 because that's as large a number as the Jewish system could go. The Maya, they love big numbers, and so they got these large, large connections of numbers. Anyway, uh, here's the date uh, as it's drawn. You always have drawings. I want you to know why we always draw monuments. You can see that this drawing is fairly clear. You can see the 10, the two bars. 
this little happy face, which is the word a how, and this little number uh, 13, two bars and three dots, which is Yash Keen, another month. And this is the drawing of the prediction of what's going to happen. I said, two, I said 36, I meant 209 days. Anyway, um, but this is the carving. The carving is not that deep. As you see, the carving is, takes a great deal of dis discrimination to be able to even see. And so we like to draw them because they're so hard to see in photographs. Anyway, another reason not to be too worried about the my prediction about the end of the world is that this is the map of language families in Mesoamerica. About the time of the conquest, this is the number of different families of language. There's the Maya language is as different from the Zochian, uh, pardon me, the, the Mihe, Miche, where's Mihe? Can't find Mihe. Anyway, it's different from the Aztec language, it's different from the Macro, from the uh, Tarascan, it's different from these, they're as different from each other as they are from English. Very, very diverse. The cultures of Mexico are extremely complex. Linguistically, they're more complex than Europe. And among the Maya, Mayan languages, there are 33 different Mayan languages, even today, still spoken. Here's the names of some of them. It's a really complex culture, and every one of these cultures had their own calendar and their own system of, of deciding which, you know, which were the gods that protected them and when the world would end. And they don't agree. Here's the, uh, the sort of main outlines of the history of Mesoamerica. This is the mother culture. It focused in what is now uh, the, the coastline of southern Veracruz, and a little bit of Tabasco. It's called the Olmec. The Olmec were the culture that developed the calendar. They developed writing. They developed the system of building pyramids. Um, they're the ones that worship jade. All the things that we think of as Mesoamerican were Olmec to start with. They lived until 400 BC. Then they wiped themselves out. They didn't die, but their culture fell, just like ancient Rome. Rome Romans still exist. The Italians still exist. But their culture fell apart, and it broke up into the countries of Europe. The Olmecs were followed by the Maya. And the Zapotecs and a couple of others. Here's where the main part of the Maya culture was. It started in Guatemala. Guatemala is a completely Mayan country. It spread a little bit to Yucatan and to sort of the southern Mexico here. A little bit into San El Salvador and Honduras. And they ruled until about 900 AD. And then they blew it. Their culture fell apart. This is long before the Spanish came. And then the Aztecs took over in the 1300s and they ruled essentially the, the Valley of Mexico and sort of countries that they conquered. So remember this. Um, Olmecs first, ancient times, uh, Maya second in medieval times, and then the uh, Aztecs in the Renaissance. That's kind of the way to remember it. So they're three completely different cultures, three different languages, three different uh, religions, but they were all ultimately based on the Olmecs. Now, one of the things that, um, having looked at all these, these myths, and I looked at every single mention of the Maya prophecies, if you will, about the future and about the past and what their creation was and what they believed, and they all related things to this concept of the universe as being, um, as being five-fold. That is to say, it's like a clover. There's a center, and it's a north, a south, east, and a west, like petals of a flower. And the spaces between the petals of the flower, what are called the intercardinal directions, were also interested. And they mapped everything onto, those, onto that chart. But the Ahau, the king of the Maya, would have been related to um, a saber tree, king of the forest, the tallest tree, the national tree of Guatemala. One of the interesting things about a saber tree is that no matter how big it grows, it has branches that tend to go straight out, like they're going north, south, east, and west. And they, they, they thought of the tree as pointing to these directions. Although even sometimes the trees aim, you know, north, north, northeast and stuff. The Saba tree is the king of the forest. It's the national tree of Guatemala even today. 